The subject of this video was a recommendation in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, sharing, and subscribing. And now to the monster. In the early 2000s, a vicious killer took the lives of at least eight women in and around Peoria, Illinois. Seven of the women were strangled to death, while the eighth was given a lethal amount of narcotics. With some of the victims, he went to great lengths to dispose of their remains, and the methods he used led to his ominous nickname, Larry Bright, the Bone Crusher. Larry Bright was born on July 8, 1966 in Peoria County, Illinois. In a relatively normal childhood, however, he did become involved in crime at a young age. He was smoking marijuana as a teen, and by 19, he was doing prison time for vehicle and residential burglary. After getting out of prison, Larry began using hard drugs, but things got even worse after a back injury at his job as a concrete worker. And as with so many, this led to a painkiller addiction. This addiction led to depression and eventually his interactions with prostitutes. By the year 2000, this is how he spent a good deal of his time paying extra attention to black women. Before the series of murders that would make Bright infamous, there was another suspicious death that occurred in close proximity to him. In 1993, he was living with his fiance, Christy Belleville, and her young daughter. On August 9th, they reported that they awoke to the seven-month-old girl coughing. An ambulance rushed to the scene, but the infant was dead before they were able to get her to the hospital. When the doctors examined her, the death seemed suspicious. Police made three attempts to perform a polygraph examination on Bright, but none were successful. A warrant was served on the trailer where he lived, and it was found to be filthy with ants and dog feces. An autopsy, though, found no evidence of shaken baby syndrome, which was the suspected cause of death. Instead, a heart condition was found, which may have contributed to the death of the seven-month-old. While the case against Bright for the death of the infant was closed, the turmoil around him and his fiancée continued. They were married that same month. However, in mid-September, Christie filed for divorce, stating that Bright was extremely physically and mentally abusive. Strangely, the divorce was not completed until 1997. While Bright's involvement in the death of his fiancée's daughter is questionable, there is no question that he committed several murders in the early 2000s. There are eight known victims and several more murders that he is suspected of committing. Four of the bodies were burned and then the ashes and bone were pulverized with a hammer to make identification more difficult, if not impossible. The first victim was killed in late July 2003. 30-year-old Sabrina Payne was working the streets in Peoria, Illinois. Larry Bright picked her up and took her to his house. At some point, he strangled her to death, though he claims he has no memory of the murder. Once she was dead, Bright loaded her into his Chevy Blazer and dumped her body in a field near an Illinois village called Tremont, where she was found on July 27, 2003. In February of 2004, another victim's body was found. The body of 36-year-old Barbara Williams was discovered near the town of Edward. The poor woman had been dumped in a ditch where she was found on February 5th. In August of 2004, Bright committed one of the murders that would earn him his nickname. Laura Lawler was 33 years old when she crossed paths with the killer. The two made a deal and went off together. Larry strangled her, then burned her remains before smashing the bone fragments into dust to make identification impossible. Later, when he was in custody, he had to identify her using a photo as one of his victims. During August of 2004, two of Bright's other victims were reported missing. Shaconda Thomas was 32 when she disappeared. She was killed and her body was disposed of in the same manner as Laura Lawler. 45-year-old Shirley Ann Trapp met a similar fate. In September of 2004, Bright murdered a 40-year-old woman named Linda Neal. They had agreed to exchange drugs for adult activities and went to his home. When she was asleep, he strangled her to death, but because his mother was home, he could not incinerate her remains. So he dumped her on the side of the road in a neighboring county beside the Mackinac River. 
During that same month, 29-year-old Tamara Walls was reported missing. She had been killed by Bright, and her body was never found aside from charred bone fragments which may have been her, but DNA testing was unable to confirm the identity of the remains. The last known victim of Larry Bright was a 41-year-old woman named Brenda Irving. When he tried to strangle her, she put up a ferocious fight. Irving nearly knocked the creature unconscious, but as she scrambled to open the door and escape, he subdued her with several blows to the head. Once she was unable to fight back, Bright strangled her to death and then dumped her on a dairy farm where she was found on October 15th. By late 2004, there was a police task force searching for the killer. They were not having much luck until a woman named Vicki Bomar offered to help them. She told police of a violent altercation with Larry Bright and police were able to find other similar accusations against him. In December of 2004, Bright was brought in for questioning, but he stonewalled investigators and was released. However, they were not done with Larry just yet. In January of 2005, they obtained a search warrant for his property, searching for evidence connecting him to the series of murders that they were trying to solve. They found several locations where dirt had been dug up and bone fragments had been discarded. Testing was able to confirm that they were indeed human. Now realizing that the game was up, Bright confessed to eight murders when he was taken again into custody. In the cases where the victims had been burned, he had to identify them using police photographs. He told police that when he burned the bodies, he would have to leave them in the flames for up to two days to maximize the destruction. His true motivation is unknown, however some have speculated that he killed out of racism. Others believe it was a sick obsession with pornography and sex. Bright himself said that he was seeking revenge for contracting AIDS from a prostitute. But when he tested negative for the disease, he switched tact and said that he had been abused in prison and this was his revenge. The confession saved him from the death penalty and on May 30, 2006, he received eight life sentences. During the trial, he also confessed to a handful of murders in Wisconsin, Oklahoma, Washington, and Oregon. Perhaps fearing a death sentence, he retracted these statements, leaving many questions unanswered as to how many victims he truly had, and many families wondering whether their loved ones had lost their lives at his hands. He is currently housed at the Shawnee Correctional Center in Illinois. Thank you to everyone who watches and subscribes to my channel. I'll see you soon with another monster.